This one is to talk about navigation lights, what the regulations are, how it applies to us on Morning Vicar, i.e. what we're required to do by law, and what we're actually doing. So full disclaimer here, I am not an expert. Please do your own research and don't take my word for it. There is every likelihood I know nothing and I'm making it all up. This is YouTube after all. Now, I watch an awful lot of boats come in and out of Brixham Harbour at night with various configurations of lights and it's remarkable how varied the various implementations of regulations are. Most production boats are factory fitted, so I suppose they're kind of compliant. Old yachts can be quite interesting. Small motorboats don't really seem to care. And fishermen work on the basis that the more lights they have, the better. You'll never miss a working fishing trawler. Unless, of course, you're relying on your AIS. They seem to have them turned off most of the time. So what are the lights all about? Well, according to Colregs, and I quote, Lights and shapes are used to indicate the status of a vessel at sea and the direction in which a vessel underway is moving to allow the correct action to be taken by all vessels when in sight of each other. Now basically I think that means uh, what's that and which way is it going? So what light you show depends on many things, namely how big you are, or whether you're motoring or whether you're sailing, amongst other things. Luckily, the RYA has um, looked at call regs and has given us a handy tabular interpretation of how it works. So how does this apply to a Shrimper 19? It depends whether we're motoring or sailing. So let's take motoring first. Now, a Connie Shrimper is under seven metres long, unless you're MDL marinas, in which case your sh Shrimper might well be on their database at 7.3 metres like mine. Uh, who knows why? Uh, it creates an argument every time I try and use them, uh, so I'm avoiding that now. Anyway, we're under 7 metres and we're definitely not capable of exceeding 7 knots, which means that if we're motoring, the masthead and stern light may be combined into an all-round light. So my masthead all-round white light is good to go. But it also says that side light should be exhibited if practicable. Now Vicar definitely identifies as a small yacht, not a racing dinghy or a rowing boat. So having identified as a small yacht, clearly we want to present as a small yacht. Basically, we're going to behave as a small yacht, so it would be useful if the world identified us as, as such, which means port and starboard lights. So by the letter of the law, if we're motoring, we just need a masthead light but it would be quite nice to have port and starboard lights. Okay, so what about when we're sailing? Uh, again, we're still under seven meters and we definitely can't do more than seven knots while sailing. So the letter of the law says, basically, I just need a torch if I get near someone. But again, we identify as a small yacht, so we want to present as one. And I can show a tricolor at the masthead or port and starboard lights and a stern light. Now, I think it's important to point out that the coal reg specifically tells you not to have a mast light if you're sailing. The mast light identifies the vessel as um, under power, under motor. Similarly, you can't motor with the tricolor on top as that identifies you as a sailing vessel. I also have a slight concern about a tricolor on the masthead of a gaffed yacht. You can only use it when you're sailing, and if you're sailing, the gaff is going to be higher than the mast head, which means a significant part of that stern light in the tricolor is going to be obscured. So a sensible combination for morning vicar is an all-round mast head light and port and starboard running lights combined with a stern light when you're sailing. Basically, mast head light when you're motoring with side lights. And when you're sailing, turn off the masthead light and put on a stern light. So what's fitted to Vicar then? Well, as part of the electronics refit, um, I do want to put port and starboard running lights on. Of people paying attention and have watched all of the other videos, you really need to do that. 
will already know that I have a master head all round white light fitted, but until I get around to screwing all the other bits on, I'm hoping to make use of the emergency stroke occasional lights that I inherited with the boat. Let's have a look at them. You've probably seen these in the Chandra or been given them as a birthday present. They're about 30 quid and they seem a really good idea. Your lights fail, you can clip these to the side of the boat and you'll be fine. Also, you can put them on the dinghy if you're going to go through a channel with a load of traffic. No reason not to buy it. So let's have a closer look. The top screws off and we find a simple filament bulb through a disc of metal and it gets pushed onto a D-cell with a bit of bent metal around it. Simple, right? Well, I'm all for simple. Simple usually works better than complicated. Simple is good, but in this case, simple is practically useless. Honestly, I can't get over how shoddy this thing is. I can hardly, I can barely get it working on my dining table, let alone in an emergency at night on a boat. Honestly, I'd be embarrassed if I turned this in at age 11 as a DT project. It's simply useless and unfit for purpose. But I have a solution. These cute little LED torches are really cheap. They take three AAA batteries. They're really bright, kind of waterproof on their own. But hey, look, they fit inside the waterproof housing really well. As long as you take all of that rubbish from the inside out. Uh, it can be switched on and off really easily. They do rattle around a bit, so um, I've padded them with a bit of webbing and tape. I'm sure a, a better solution will come to mind soon. Um, but for the moment, they fit there quite snugly. They're quite a bit brighter than the old filament lamp. Uh, I intend to use them vertically, so I've obscured the top of the lens with a bit of foil just to diffuse it. Um, I've tested this... Uh, this this solution with a uh, with a set of new batteries and they're still usable after a full week and they do dim a little bit but not much and that's a full week illuminated just not switched off now the amount i sail at night that's probably a lifetime's worth so a fresh set of batteries every season should sort us out so how am I going to mount them? Well, I could just simply screw the clip to the side of the boat, and I'm sure that would work. But I, um, I don't really want to be scrambling on the deck, particularly at night. Um, my philosophy is I like to do everything from the cockpit or standing in the companionway. So for the moment, um, I've come up with this little idea. We'd do the slot cut out that fits over the D-ring on the back of the tabernacle at the base of the mast. The lights are on clips at the front, and I can just reach forward from the companion way to put it in place or take it off. It's held there for the moment by a little wedge of wood. I'm sure I'll find a more elegant solution soon. Now, Colregs is pretty specific about colours, about sectors, illumination, and minimal, minimum uh, visible distance. And they should not be ignored, but I think the visible sectors are pretty close and certainly better than a number of yachts tied up on this very pontoon today. So I'm going to give it a little test, uh, tweak the geometry a little, and I'll get back to you with the results. As ever, thanks so much for watching. Please feel free to rant at me, correct me, or generally communicate in the comments. But please like and subscribe. Hopefully I'll see you out in the water as soon as this horrible weather ends. Bye for now.